about your early years. Well, how'd you get into it? When, what did you start doing? I first got started with volleyball. It's actually kind of a funny story because when I was in eighth grade, um, which is much later than most girls started, um, but we hosted a foreign exchange student from Brazil. His name's Hafa. And in Brazil, he lived a block or two from the beach and everyone was always playing beach volleyball. Um, and so when he came, he's like, oh, wow, you're so tall. You should play volleyball. And I was like, no, like, I don't know. So he actually encouraged me to go out and try out for the team um, in eighth grade. And I did, and I actually loved it. So I kept playing. Um, in 10th grade, I started playing club um, and got a little bit more committed, although it was a smaller club team. Um, and then the year after that, I played for a different club that was more competitive. And the coaches started talking to me, you know, are you interested in playing in college? And I kind of thought about it, like, yeah, I guess that would be cool. I decided, yes, I did want to play in college, so we started uh, taking visits, looking around, and that's when I found Ohio, and I knew it was my place. I loved it as soon as I visited here. Why? A bunch of different factors of why I liked it, uh, but I knew I didn't want a big city campus, so I was looking for something a little bit smaller. Um, but not a super small school, so I liked the amount of students. Um, I liked the weather, less snow than at home, which was great. Um, and just, I think the most important thing was the team. Um, each visit I made when I got to meet the team, you could kind of picture yourself in there with the girls. Um, and when I met the team, I was like, yes, I love these girls. They're so nice, so welcoming. Um, and that really, that made my decision for me right there. I'd have to say my absolute favorite game this year was a um, home game against Bowling Green, um, which clinched our lead in the MAC, which was absolutely awesome. Um, at that point, we were both tied for first, um, and there was only a couple games left in the regular season. We swept them in three, actually, which was awesome. Such a good feeling. Um, and that was senior night, too, which made it really special, uh, just because I felt like we were a little bit in the spotlight, which is always fun, um, and it was just such a great win. How about the Oregon match? Yeah, the Oregon match was really cool. Um, I think looking back, it was actually um, more neat after the fact, just because they made it to the championship game, um, and to end up second in the country is incredible. Um, and to think we took a game from them is really, really cool. Uh, so that was a great game too, I'd say. I think we learned a lot from it um, early on in the season. There's one play we run that's called an A hut. So that's when I'm out on um, like a wide set, one of those shoot sets. Um, and so quite often I'll jump and they'll jump with me because it looks like the setter's setting it right to me, but really it's going right over me for the left side to hit. That's one of my favorite, that's absolutely my favorite. You can hear them on the other side and that like, oh, they're so frustrated because they jumped with me and then the left side hitter is wide open. So it's always a kill after that. What is the greatest thrill? Is it a bigger thrill to hit that ball down or to just crush Liz Brenner or yes, something like yes. that? I'd have to say um, when it comes to hitting and blocking, blocking is definitely my favorite. Uh, just because either way you're ending the point, but it's just such a good feeling to smash it back in their faces. Um, it's a, just a great feeling, so I'd have to say blocking is my favorite. I'm waking up to ash and dust. I wipe my brow and I sweat my rust. I'm breathing in the chemicals. How much of a sacrifice or how much of an engagement and involvement is it to be on a team like this? I'd actually say when you're in the moment, when you're in the experience itself, it almost just seems normal, like this is what's going on, this is what you have to do, the time commitment, uh, the traveling, all of that. But actually when, I, when I'm done now and I step back and look at it, it was definitely a big sacrifice um, just because you can't pick up on a random weekend and go somewhere new or a lot of times you have to miss out on family events just because you have a practice that day or a game or a tournament so definitely a sacrifice. What will you do about playing volleyball in the future?
I miss it already. I thought I wouldn't right away, uh, but I was just in Costa Rica this past winter break and saw volleyball nets getting set up on the beach, and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to play. So I played with them, which was a totally different experience, um, different culture, different people I've never played with, but it was still a great experience. And I think that's just the language of volleyball is, you know, high five here, high five there. It's a dangerous Stop. love affair. Can't be scared when it goes down. Got a problem? Tell me Stop. now. Only thing that's on my mind is who's gonna run this town tonight. Who's gonna run this town tonight? Uh, wherever I end up after graduation, if I get a job in another state or another part of the country. I definitely want to sign up for a rec league. I think that's the most intense I'll go as of now. Um, don't plan on playing overseas or anything, but definitely staying involved with volleyball. I'll miss it otherwise. Oh well. Hopefully they'll stay quiet. <laughs> the, um, one of the problems when you've played at this level is that you're just too good for everybody. You're going to go to a rec league, <laughs> not in Athens, Ohio. True. Maybe not even Columbus. Very true. I think um, I think it's fun either way, no matter what level. If you're um, even playing sand too, which would be another experience, just because it's so different from indoor volleyball that I still have so many things to learn. So that might be a route to take also, is try some sand volleyball. So what are, what's your future? What are you going to do? You're, you graduated in communication studies? Communication studies with a business minor. Um, and that is the question, what will I do? <laughs> uh, still trying to figure it out. Um, I've narrowed it down, the fact that I do really like traveling a lot and like things overseas. Um, so I'm actually looking for an opportunity, maybe in foreign business, um, or maybe, have you heard of au pairing? Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking about that right now, um, just to get a chance to travel, explore, kind of live life while I'm still young, so. Any particular part of the world you want to go to? I would like to go to Europe. That's definitely where I'd want to go. Um, even France would be great, just because I speak a little bit of French, so mm -hmm. I'd like to perfect my French. That would be really fun. Ryan always tells us the practices are for him and the games are for us, um, I, because it's sometimes more hard, uh, harder to get motivated every day for every practice for you know three or four hours long, uh, whereas games, our fans are there, and it's just so much more exciting, and every point really does matter on the scoreboard. But at the same time, when you think about it, every point does matter in practice because you're trying to get better and you're trying to make each other better. Um, but I'd say a lot of that comes from team chemistry and also just the individuals on our team. Um, like when we had Merrill Bender my freshman and sophomore years, it was always a loud, fun practice. Um, and it, sometimes it takes those, um, those individuals to really get us going. Um, which is hard when you lose those players, uh, but you definitely have to find that within each team and within um, each different year of how you're going to stay motivated and excited for every practice. You know those, those calls that the setters are always making? Yes. Now, who makes the calls on the team? Who decides what you're going to, is that always the setter or do you? Because I see you doing this, you know, and you're signaling <laughs> this and this, and who's deciding things out there? Um, Mostly the setter. The setter is kind of like a quarterback, so they do get to decide on the spot what play we're going to run um, and where everyone falls into place. Um, sometimes, like right after timeouts or even during a play, like on the sidelines, the coaches can also call a play that they want um, the setter to run, so then the setter will give us the signal. The signals I give are for blocking. So the middle, the middle hitter is kind of like the quarterback of the blockers. Right. Um, so I'll give a signal um, which hitter to commit to, um, so then we'll make sure we block that hitter, especially if they're a good one, and then leave the other two um, a little bit more open. So it's kind of like we gamble at where their setter is going to set the ball and then where we're going to block it. So Walt is the coordinator of those signals, so before every play I look to Walt, who gives me one of the commit signals. So read is like I get to decide, middle, I'm blocking their middle left side, their left side, and then right side, their right side. So I'll give one of those, and then the back row players are even supposed to look as well, 
just to see um, where I'm going to be, so where the hole in the block might be for them to move to cover. So it, it all kind of works together. It's very intricate. I noticed that you and Leah have a real bond about things. And does that even help Leah, that you're friends outside? It definitely does. Um, I think you just share kind of a bond and like a language, even if it's not spoken, that just being around each other for so long and playing with each other for four years, yeah. you just know like where they are the whole time. And it, there's just a, I'd say a better connection out on the court with the setter hitter. Shaping up. Been checking out on the prison bus. This is in the apocalypse. What is it like to come up in the last year? You know, your, your, your last year in the team, and you've got to fight for your position. It's definitely frustrating. It's, I'd say, a hard process. Um, I knew coming in that I wouldn't play my freshman year, so I was comfortable about redshirting, and that was a decision I had made um, prior to even coming to Ohio. Um, and I'd say it's, it's definitely hard your last season um, when you're not playing your best um, and when injuries come to play and really good freshmen come to play. Um, I def it's definitely a hard combination. Um, but looking back, it made me stronger and it made me really appreciate um, my teammates even more. As much as it was hard every day in practice and the games, um, I learned a lot from it. So I'd say it's tough, but it makes you stronger. How did she know how to set that ball like that at that time? Lots she of just... practice. <laughs> a lot of, we do, we, in practice, um, we'll actually have our passers pass a, a poorly passed ball, so it'll be farther off the net. So we practice those situations, um, and that's where, we call it being audible. So basically, I'm just gonna be really loud, and if I see an opening, I'll run that set and just call it really, really loud. So whoever's setting will hear me, and to set it. So we practice those um, to have that situation under control <laughs> as much as we can. <laughs> Say something about your family because the first one we met was Art, your grandfather. Oh yeah, I mean, Right from the start, he <laughs> was just all in. Yeah, I call um, my grandpa pop up and I call him my number one fan because he really is. Although it's close competition with my dad, I have to say. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but yeah, he drives hours and hours almost every weekend just to see me play and compiles notebooks every year he gives me one after the season so usually around Christmas time of the stats from every game and every article he's picked up while he's in Athens and just an incredible amount of information that he's compiled and pictures he's taken and things like that which is really really special and then again there's my dad who sends me inspirational quotes before every game and before every week which is really awesome Show